to miss there is that how actually these Afri East African presidents or uh, African presidents are actually attacking democracy because you cannot have you cannot I mean you cannot have a, you cannot have a, a, a country without an opposition I mean and uh, you cannot keep on hoping that opposition is wrong opposition is wrong they're actually just doing their job that's a, that's a democracy mm. yeah because I think the first thing Museveni said is that it's his job to make sure that there is no opposition <laughs> and uh, here, we are, here we are being told that um, uh, I mean, like, opposition does not mean that you you, you go against whatever. It's like you're being told to the line. You're in the opposition, but you have to tell <coughs> the line. Mm. But um, whatever Gadara has also pointed out, I, I think sometimes maybe we read too much uh, into into these things because uh, everybody, I mean, everybody, I mean, it's the family is in business, is the milk business. But I think uh, the best thing to do would probably to read this uh, deal that was signed, read and find out before we start attacking. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be yeah, well, the best. Right thing. now, even what one of the things they're saying is release the details to the yeah. 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 That I then think that before yeah. we go that, and that run yeah. because uh, then that we're going to whatever is happening, like in the U.S. now, where Obama says that most of the people who attack, they run deals. Instead of attacking it, even before, before they read it, read just it. because it's mm -hmm. him who, who signed it. Mm -hmm. okay. so, I, so I think uh, the, 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 the whatever, the came, whatever came out of the Uganda thing, I think it would be better for us to read it first, and then before we start probably attacking it, we find the merits and demerits and probably how it's going to affect the sugar industry. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, for all we care, it, it might be good. I mean... Well, um, <coughs> and I don't want us to, let's start with the church. We will go back to Uganda. <laughs> I want to get a feel of what's through that <laughs> for you. But let's uh, begin with church because there's been really a lot going on there. And Nganga, the pastor, spoke out the other day on a television interview. And he criticized the media and in particular was talking about appeared to be uh, directing fingers at one particular one saying that they have an agenda. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask this to you uh, first, Nancy. <laughs> Watching that story unfold, did you get the sense that this was a vendetta that was being settled? That yes, there was this story that happened, but that there was this particular media house that put all its resources, went out gun blazing against Pastor Nganga? Uh, I, I don't think it was a vendetta. Uh, I, I just think that media was being responsible and playing their, their watchdog role. And, um, you know, it's been a, a busy week, <laughs> you know, for media regarding that, that, particular, uh, that particular story. Um, I think they played their watchdog role really well, uh, you know, in, in terms of piecing up uh, the, the details around, around that story. And mm -hmm. we have seen, you know, uh, the events unfold. Um, and, and uh, what is now being done in terms of, uh, you know, pursuing justice, so to speak, regarding, uh, you know, that, that particular accident. Yeah. Um, I think for me what, what, what has been, I mean, the question that I've been struggling with is um, what's the position of church in society? Mm -hmm. And when you are held in high esteem and should be, you know, of moral standing, because then, you know, you have a lot of followers, um, uh, then you also have to be subjected to that kind of scrutiny. And I know that, you know, when media then gets into that and starts investigating some of these things, that it's likely to be uncomfortable. Mm. Because the truth is that uh, we have very many, uh, you know, religious leaders in the country. I think right now they, we have about, you know, about 200,000 uh, pastors, so to speak. Really? You know, across, yes, across oh. the country. We are different, church people. You know, different <laughs> denominations. <laughs> they almost outnumber um, the number of bars we yeah. have. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, with that, with that kind of, of large, you know, large number of pastors and, and a number of people attending to the Christian faith, uh, then you cannot, you cannot, uh, you cannot be. Um, y you cannot say that you're not up for scrutiny. Mm. That we, you know, the church needs to be open, you know, to that that kind of scrutiny. I was reading, you know, Mashara Gaido's article, uh, you know, online, and uh, it has a bit of sarcasm, and you know, which which is relevant because essentially what he's saying is that you know, for many of of, of the churches, that there has really been no accountability. Uh, you know, with regards to the operations that, that happened there. And, and so um, I think it's an opportunity for the church to look at itself and ask itself, 
what what is its place in society and uh, also when you say the church i mean mm -hmm. who are you talking about because church is the people look at the church he you know preaches in mm -hmm. Neno. Mm -hmm. you had last sunday mm -hmm. more people even attend mm -hmm. packed church even one hour before service began so you'd imagine these are the people who would see all of these things and wonder and you know but still again Maybe that's a different subject <laughs> altogether. Yeah. But let me ask this to you, Gadara. Are there those uh, Kenyans on Twitter who felt that the story wasn't balanced, that a lot of the focus uh, by the media was on the on Pastor Nganga, the person, and going after him, and not the victims and their plight and what was going on and telling their side of the story? Well, I think, um, first, I mean, uh, uh, we really have to congratulate the press for... Uh, hey, Gavala. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, uh, for, no, for actually keeping it uh, 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 alive and actually yeah. pursuing the story without the media attention. Um, uh, this would have been sort of forgotten and brushed under the rug. The police had already uh, sort of dispensed with it, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, until... Um, uh, it was ma the media made a fuss uh, 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 over it, uh, uh, both online and offline, mm -hmm. you know, and actually got the police to reverse themselves, you know, um, uh, from initially declaring Pastanga had nothing to do with this, to now recommending that he be prosecuted. I know, from mm -hmm. the IG. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that is the sort of video I'd love to see, I mean, uh, 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 um, uh, where they, you, you actually take on um, uh, and hold to account the people who, who who act in our in our name, um, uh, I think that uh, I, f I find it a bit strange for people to say that it's just focused on on Pastor Ngang. I think yeah. more the story was the cover up by the police. I think that's mm -hmm. what the the bigger focus was. You know, um, the other thing that uh, I noticed was on uh, um, after his appearance uh, on Monday on Citizen, uh, Pastor Ngang of course saying he's been given a forum to. Mm -hmm. Intimidate ETC, which I don't really think is true. I think if people, if, if the press is going to go out and put out stories about you or me uh, saying we've done one, two, three, then we are entitled to respond to this. Mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't mean we have to agree with him, you know, but he is entitled to come out and give his side of the story. You know, so the media didn't seek him out enough? Um, I, I think I mean, he was saying nobody had, had called him before Monday, which I found, uh, if that was true, then that mm. was a failure. Mm. You know, um, uh, there should have been attempts uh, to, reach out. Yeah, to reach out to get his side of the story, mm. what he's saying, what's, you know, what's his version of events. You know, um, uh, but uh, in any case, um, that happened on Monday. He came on, he, ha he, uh, he got opportunity to say his, his bit. You know, but I think we need to keep on. Um, uh, on the story, and I think it needs to widen out a little mm -hmm. bit. There's been uh, a bit of reporting on other cases involving other persons. Mm -hmm. I think we'd also need to go back you know, and look at the role, the, as, as, as Nancy has said, the role the church has played historically here, you know, and actually what's happened to it. You know, um, it used to be one of the big, foremost defenders of rights, of democracy, mm -hmm. you see. Um, uh, in the 90s, you know, um, that role seems to have uh, vanished or, or to a very large extent been uh, uh, undercut, you know. So um, I think there is a bigger story to be okay, told, to be about, told. Ab about its place. So Claire, your thoughts on that story? I, I think you, you said that this Sunday he had more people than ever before, yeah? That there were more people and <coughs> had been seated one hour before okay, he showed. You should thank the media then. <laughs> <laughs> he did. The, the yeah, Nairobian last week reported that he said he wants to thank the media because they've given him, you know, more publicity. Even on that interview, he said mm -hmm. his children are telling him no, he's not a celebrity. Not a celebrity. Yeah. So he's seeing himself as having, you know, yes, bad so or good I as mean, good he's, he's just publicity. A, he's just a confused fellow. <laughs> he's just a confused fellow. But uh, but I think blaming the media for probably his wars and all that, I think that is totally out of place. It's something maybe that uh, we should not even, nobody should even take him seriously on that angle when he says that the media has put so much spotlight on him and all that. Because what was happening is that this was, uh, in fact for me, the spotlight was, was more on the police mm -hmm. than on him. It was mm -hmm. only that he happened to be the, the culprit or the suspect in this case. But the whole thing was how the police was trying to cover up an, I mean, a, a, a criminal, a traffic offense or a criminal act. I think that, that is what was uh, the, the story. To blame the media, that, uh, that's out of the question because uh, 
here is a case where we're just trying to we're just trying to more or less to to be the fourth estate in as much as what the other three arms of the government cannot do or are, are, are not doing well i think that's what we're doing we are just answer being answerable to the people that is exactly what you are doing in this did the family case. get enough air time the family actually because the whole reason why the, the main reason why people are doing this it was justice for mass injury exactly mm -hmm. that was my thinking as well yeah. it was justice for mass yeah. 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 it was not just prosecute this guy but going okay. further i think also th these are only two cases probably that have been highlighted mm -hmm. and I, th i think we need to go further than that and find out like if this one case i mean this pastanganga case brought the other one of Pastor Wahome mm -hmm. brought about the other one of Pastor Wahome where there was also some kind of a cover-up. Mm -hmm. uh, not to mention branded defamation. If I were in Jiroka, I would sue the thing. <laughs> 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 I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, we should actually find out like how many other cases of probably high-profile people or mm -hmm. well-connected people do traffic police officers try to cover up. Mm -hmm. And going further, it also s speaks volumes about just our road safety record. You see, because w what, what are going, fa going forward, what are we putting in place like, um, how do we yep. even know how we, I, I mean, we need to look at the whole, uh, the whole picture, the bigger picture of probably road safety mm -hmm. also. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, because well, we cannot I mean, uh, end at that place. Yeah? Okay. I think, I think yes. before we, we get to the road safety bits, uh, um, I, I think the, we need to be looking at the role of the police here mm. um, and especially I mean we've s and we see this a lot on our roads uh, of people being escorted yeah. you know roads being cleared mm -hmm. you know for driving on the wrong side yeah, on the wrong, the wrong side, side real fast flashing you know up, yeah. uh, and stuff <laughs> and I think we need to be going back and looking at the laws mm -hmm. you know um, if this guy was actually being escorted by police officers that has been uh, 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 reported you know um, uh, was that legal you know, do our laws allow for this, for them to be opening up roads because some uh, pastor or some minister... See, so far, so far what has been you established know, and, and is that uh, there, was an, there was an accident, yeah, there was an accident, yeah. and I don't yeah, think... But you know, yeah. he was driving, and, uh, apparently, the car was driving on the wrong yes, side but of but the road. But you see, like, uh, uh, having, having police officers, mm -hmm. I think, I think it's a, the, you, you can pay and have police officers. When they're off So, so that, that one's still, I mean, yes. Well, I that, that, that mean, one, the, the we need to look into that. But my point is, the prevalence of it, the fact that we keep seeing this, I mean, you, you can't drive on Nairobi roads without people passing, you know, whenever there is traffic on their wrong side of the road, flashing yeah. lights, you know, some of them, GK, lots of them escorted by police. I think that's where the road, you road know, And my question is, again, what's the policy and here? Yeah. You know, what are the rules here? What are the laws here? As far as I know, it's probably the president and ambulances that are allowed. Yeah, because um, Kaiseri yeah. talks about the yeah, sirens and exactly. only, you know, yes, keep seeing, so many you know, of them. Who's being held to account? And the press, you know, for this. <laughs> and and I, I think, yeah. I think uh, you know, just before we lose, uh, you know, we get into, you know, the traffic and, and road safety, uh, you know, the, the attack on media, you know, by, by Pastor Gang, I think for me was, uh, it was a question of the same script, you know, uh, different players. You Everyone know, attacks the media. Everybody attacks the media when it is not, you know, uh, favoring. Even the mm -hmm. You know. No, no, no. Media has never come up to me. You know, and, and, and for me, uh, the reason why, you know, it's, it's a whole question of the church and media is, you know, th this is the same church that uses the media to evangelize, to, you know, to reach out to yeah. people, you know. He has bought time on, on TV stations yeah. uh, uh, to be able to, uh, to, to reach out to people. At that point, you know, the media is, is, not, is not an enemy. But when the media is investigating something that he's involved in, then, you know, the, the media is, 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 yeah. is, is bad. But also, do you also think we could explore the angle that we hear reports that Kenya is largely a Christian country? So mm. we have all of this happening. You have mm. the Kanyari story when it happened, mm -hmm. still very many people went to church. Mm. So that all of these things are unveiled and people still throng to these, you know, um, churches and continue to worship. And they're told, yes, these are demons and they are enemies and they're going to be defeated by the blood of Jesus. All those attacking me will be killed. So how can the media cover what really then is wrong with society because if this everyone agrees or largely at least on social media that is wrong the people in that church don't see it that way they're going there and standing with their pastor i think this speaks of a very vulnerable society 
you know, uh, and I think Masharia Gaido talks about it in his in his mm -hmm. piece, which, uh, you know, if I was, uh, you know, a church leader, you know, it's something that I would like to read and, and think about, that, you know, society is very vulnerable, so much so that, um, you know, we have all manner of uh, pastors coming in, you know, preaching the prosperity gospel, and there is such a need, you know, because people are in despair, uh, so much so that then they would throng these churches to pray for miracles, to to give of a seed, you know, to, to get a miracle and, and all these things happening. So it speaks of a very vulnerable society. And for me, I think what, what I would have loved to see is where, is where has the voice of the mainstream church, so to speak, been in all this debate, you mm -hmm. know. We haven't had them. Uh, you know, they haven't come out and said, uh, uh, you know, this is wrong. It is a religious leader who was involved in this. And we, you know, if this is the case, then we condemn it. Mm. You know, that, I think for me, that presence of what you'd call the mainstream churches yeah. uh, has, has been missing. And, and, and I guess it points to the direction of where, where is the church's voice when issues of national concern you know, are playing out in, in media, mm. that oftentimes they, they tend to take a back seat. They're very vocal on vaccine yes. policy, yes. for example. <laughs> yes. yeah. But, you know, in this instance where we actually need to hear them, you know, um, then we, we are really not getting mm. that, that kind of, of yeah. presence. Yeah. And gathering in terms of perspective, for the media to come through to now paint that picture and say these are the real underlying issues that is mm -hmm. getting society to this place, because you link that to what we still happen with the school kids. You know, they're in this matatu, they're smoking and doing all these kinds of things. There appears to be a real problem, but we are covering largely the symptoms of it. Are we breaking it down? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, uh, I have to say that uh, I mean, kids are kids, um, uh, and, and kids do do stupid things. We did stupid things when we were in school. No, uh, no, no, I, no, I, no, did. I did not. I take that under advice. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, the fact is, the uh, we should be looking at the environment within which. Uh, uh, um, the kids operating, whether we're actually equipping them to deal with the challenges that they face. Mm -hmm. you know. um, I think the, for me the, the, the narrative of a general moral uh, breakdown of society um, it, for me seems a lot then really hold water if you will. Mm. You know. I think it becomes a, a way for us to avoid dealing with problems as opposed to actually uh, 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 fixing the the real issues. I mean, I'll give an example. Uh, look at the, the war on, on alcohol. You know, which um, uh, postulates a, a big uh, alcohol crisis, but no data to support this. There is nothing that has been put out to support the idea that uh, Kenyan youths are drinking themselves. Uh, uh, but do you need data to be able to crack down on a problem that is do How do you know life? that there is a problem? And what problem are you solving? Oh, really? You know, that's, a, that's the thing. It's an assumption that we make. So there are no people that are addicted to this I'm not saying, there are, no to this illicit I'm not saying there are no people who are addicted. Yeah, I just want but the numbers... You want a scientific no, no, wait, no, what we want, on it. When we say that there is a generalized crisis, you know, um, we might have localized crisis in a few parts of the country, you know, but when we postulate everywhere, then we have problems. You know, when we say that it's what so drastic, wait a minute, when we say it is so drastic that we throw out the law and we have mobs going into businesses to break them out, you know, and stuff, and we say it's because it's emergency, you know, again, where is the data to prove that there's an emergency? You know, it's not there. Uh, and the second thing is this, um, uh, I think we, we, that we end up tackling the wrong problems. The problem of illicit brew, for example, is a problem of regulation. Mm. You know. But we ignore that. Nobody is talking about the laws that we have. So for you, you know, there is no breakdown in society with these stories we are no, seeing I'm not now. saying there is no problem. What I'm saying is the scale of the problem is not what is being presented. And, and actually, the yeah. solutions that we are proposing or that we are actually implementing now are not solutions to solve the actual problem. They are solving the perception yeah. that we have, and it's a perception that is widely okay, back uh, by the kids. By the back, yeah, back to yeah, the kids. Back, yeah. back to, back to the, the kids. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting that you know, the reaction after and the data that was available mm -hmm. after of the young people who are, you know, who are um, 
uh, you know, taking drugs and alcohol. I think, uh, you know, Mutudo gave some figures, said mm. about 50% of, mm. of, 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 of the young people are, you know, taking drugs and, um, are, you know, taking alcohol. And now it's a crisis. And, and for me, when I had that, I asked myself, wait a minute, why did we have to wait for this to happen? for these, you know, statistics or figures to be given to us so that then we can actually feel that it, mm. is, it is a matter of national concern. It comes, it always comes after the fact, you know. It Let me uh, jump in here, just say something. Um, uh, when Mututo postulates that 50% of youth are taking drugs or drinking alcohol, we really need to be skeptical about it. Yes, we need, we need to be skeptical <laughs> about the figure, you know, but he gives the figure. It, mm. Because if, if they're the ones then mandated, you know... Uh, yeah, look at the studies, you know, when they show that the people who actually do... And we're losing track, bring it back to coverage. ...about 2.4 to 5 percent of the population, you know. This is not everybody drinking. 87 percent, was it 85 percent of right. Kenyans have never actually touched a drink, okay. you know. Claire, I'll bring it to you and ask about Sorry, I had terms of features <laughs> because we are now going to alcohol. Yeah. 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 Bring this back. Okay. But that's a cut me short. Yeah. You know, I think what I wanted to say is this, that, um, you know, if for it to be a national crisis and an issue that then needs public attention, that the institutions that are mandated to, you know, to check you know, some of these things should be speaking about whatever is deemed as a crisis way before, you know, something happens. Because this was one event or two or three events that happened in a span of about a week that then draws attention to that. Then we get data that is now being presented to point us towards a crisis which cannot be auth authenticated. You know, when, when, when was this data collected? What's the time frame? Are those the latest figures, if at all? Okay. And, it, and it raises questions. Clay, the kids, what we're seeing happening with them, the churches, the other aspect of what's happening with society, are we telling that story? Uh, I think, uh, just to go back to the church, and uh, the, I think the most the media can do is probably just, uh, <coughs> because I, I, you, you cannot, you cannot uh, legislate faith, you know, mm -hmm. like tell people, uh, the way people go to church or how, why people believe in these guys, you cannot, it's very difficult to actually to start a campaign to make these people uh, start a media campaign to make the, like these church goers or start telling them that, oh, you know, this pastor is not the right pastor for you, this church is not the right one for you. I think that, that one... Uh, uh, well, I don't think anyone is asking for the media to do that. I know. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm just saying when it comes to that where, you, where we, we're saying like, oh, we have to look at the, the, the role of... The, of, uh, I mean, why people still go to this, these places and yeah. are we a vulnerable society and stuff like that. Of course, yes, we are probably vulnerable like most societies. I mean, we have our, our insecurities and we seek solace in all, all, all kinds of places. I mean, and I think, I think uh, church or religion is probably one of them. Um, having said that, I think, I think so far uh, there's, th there's not much the media can do apart from covering it the way it, it happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no, and I think that so far, I, I think we've done that, we've done that quite well. We've done that quite well about, because what are we going to do? I mean, start pushing or start pushing the government, like regulate these churches. What, what is the criteria? I mean, at what level can you be declared a church? Or at what level can you be declared like you're a legitimate pastor? All right. You know? I want us well, to move on along. I, 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 I totally agree with you. Yeah. I was quite against yeah. Um, uh, it when the deputy president was suggesting that uh, the, the government should be vetting uh, our, pastors. our pastors. I don't think that the government should be policing faith. But there, there is an issue of accountability here, you know. And just the fact that you're a pastor mm -hmm. or you are a high profile person, there are still laws that you've got to abide by. That's and and the, I media think the media has done well too. would be um, to continue to highlight That's you know, cases where. Um, uh, either they're being allowed to, to, to go away or right. where we actually even fail. I mean, like in the Kanyari's case, mm -hmm. we basically as a society failed to hold him to account. Yeah. You know, there's no case against him. L uh, let's move uh, on to the Menti Central Member of Parliament, Muiti, who has been having that rape case in court. And recently there was uh, information published of a medical report in one of the local dailies that saw the lawyers of the victim challenge that, saying that the media house that uh, published the same needs to be uh, summoned to explain the source of the information. <laughs> However, <laughs> Muiti's lawyer counter argued that, you know what, when the media was covering all of this rape story, that was information and coverage against my client, that was allowed. So when there's information that appears to 
clear my client why is it then an issue is that how you see it Nancy I, I don't think I, I see it um, I, I don't think I see it that way mm. I, I think the, the you know the, the role of media should be to cover both sides of a controversy and in this case if you know the rape was uh, the, you know, the alleged rape was given as much coverage as it got, then, you know, all this then is up for public, uh, you know, scrutiny and, and consumption. So it should be given the same amount of attention, mm -hmm. so to speak. And in this case, because of the personality that is involved, it cannot escape, uh, you know, media's attention to be able to highlight that as well. Yeah, clear in terms of access to information. So where did they, because this, the argument is these documents have not even been tabled in court and there's a uh, newspaper with all of these details that weigh into how perhaps the case would go. So ca how do we get that kind of information and uh, should I we be publishing I it? I, th I think you can't blame the media per se because, um, I mean, we got so much information right <coughs> at the beginning. I mean, like um, where this thing happened and all these things. Uh, here, I, I don't think we can blame the media for publishing this because if at all we do not, you know, sometimes it's published and uh, you, you publish and you get accused and you don't publish and you still get accused. And this is a case this Australian was going on. I mean, I think it had already started mm. and we got this, this information. I, I think the media was not, uh, the media did not break any law in publishing this because uh, it had not been sanctioned by any court uh, mm. in as much as like uh, they're saying that this information had not been released to the court. To the court, yes. If at all, it had probably been released to the court, and then we could say this is a matter which is before before uh, the uh, court. Uh, before the court, <coughs> so we cannot we cannot uh, take sides or we cannot mm -hmm. cover it. But I think it had not been so. It was information that actually was out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a lawyer. I mean, I walked out of law school. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but but I think um, here's a case where now again you're looking for a scapegoat here. It is the media. We are, being, we are caught in the middle of two warring sides, two lawyers, the lawyer for the defendant and the lawyer for the, for the, for the complainant. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think uh, in this case, I don't think th there's any, there's any okay. mistake that uh, the media so far made. Okay. I don't think That's so. Right. Because this is a case that, um, I, I, I mean, going forward, it's a case that actually, how do we hold even our, our, our MPs or our leaders to account and I don't think uh, in this particular case the intention was actually to exonerate the MP. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I think that the media is within its rights to, uh, uh, to report whenever uh, public officials are accused of, uh, of doing bad things or mm -hmm. of covering <laughs> up bad things. You know, um, uh, if, you, if you take the example of, for example, the, 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 the BCI rape case, which again was a situation where the media had not highlighted. Which one is that? Uh, the BCI rape case. Oh, that BCI, was yeah. uh, raped by mm -hmm. six men and then thrown yeah. into the toilet. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, if 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 the media hadn't covered it, you know, it would have been forgotten. Those guys had been asked to cut grass and disappear. Yeah, yeah. In fact, one aside to that is the police who asked them to cut grass have never been held to account. It was uh, something that I think the media needs to go back and look at. But so uh, you see, that even that yeah. one was, was also yeah, just thing information is, which was out if there. If it wasn't covered, mm -hmm. again, it would have just been allowed to, to go away. Mm -hmm. In the case of the uh, of Muti, if you remember, um, uh, he also went to the press and he initially denied uh, ever knowing or meeting this this, this woman, and then changed his story. Yeah. <laughs> no. So it said from never knowing. <laughs> <laughs> to knowing but not meeting on the day, yeah. to, meeting to meeting on the day yeah, but not... Mm -hmm. you yes. know. So <laughs> the fact is, he was also a participant you know, in feeding information media. to the, the media. press. He yeah. can't turn around and complain that the media didn't believe me. Mm. You know, the role of, of, of the press is to get what he says and digest it. Think mm -hmm. about it, you know, do investigation, you know, find out you know, what he's saying and then present it to the... Uh, 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 to the pro uh, uh, to the people. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I, I don't think that he's got a leg to stand on. And he says that we shouldn't cover all this bias coverage and anything like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's go to Uganda. Uh, the <laughs> president <laughs> uh, visiting Uganda. Let's call him President Chenyata, one of the <laughs> uh, members of parliament there. But so. In terms of the, this particular story, we have the opposition already saying there needs to be more information. This looks stinks dodgy, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but the media does not yet have 
at least we've not seen details published of the nobody seems to have nobody it, right? <laughs> details yeah. of yeah. this deal so yeah. that is what the media should be seeking out now well they should be seeking the details uh, uh, of that for sure you know but um even within it there's a context within which we can be working up because it has been announced that there is a deal mm -hmm. Uh, we do know that there is a deal that involves um, getting in cheap Ugandan sugar for uh, uh, Kenyan exports of beef and milk. We do know that the president has interest, so his family has interest in milk production. We do know Clear that, is, well, yeah. that's it. <laughs> yeah, we do know that, um, uh, and this is again a parliamentary <coughs> report that was done on the state of the country's sugar export. You know, that spoke of restricting, you know, the importation of sugar because it distorts the market, you know, it's there, you know, the, the PS himself went to parliament and gave recommendations, the CS rather. So the media needs to you get this. So we need to look at the entirety of it and to build the context. If we are bailing out Mumisa Sugar using, I think it was it a billion shillings a billion. Uh, uh, of public money to bail out Mumisa Sugar, <coughs> and then undercut it by bringing in cheap sugar. Is that you undercutting know, also? Th that's, this, the yeah, question. Th thank you. that's the question. Because no, do you then only have one source to... Ask. That's my yeah. point. Is there are questions that need to be uh, ventilated, you know. Yeah. So we need to push for government, as the opposition is demanding, to release the details of okay. this. And I think the media shouldn't have waited for opposition to raise it. This is something that they could have themselves. The uh, president just out. got mm. back. <laughs> you know, but, but <laughs> <laughs> the president just got back. But, uh, you know, there's, there's been a lot of coverage of his visit yes. uh, to, yeah. to Uganda. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he's just coming back, uh, you know, does not uh, stop the media from, you know, from covering, <laughs> <laughs> from, from covering and, you know, really breaking down, you know, what, you know, what deals was, was struck there. But, you know, just going back to how media covered, you know, the president's visit mm -hmm. in, in Uganda, mm -hmm. sustained coverage, you know, very good mm -hmm. and elaborate, uh, and elaborate cover. I think we need to give media credit, uh, you know, credit there. Okay. And, um, uh, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, President Uhuru even, you know, addressed the Ugandan um, uh, parliament. Parliament, that was you historical. Know, that, that was historical and, and that was given, you know, due attention. It was interesting, you know, reading the papers and how the Ugandan media, uh, you know, at some point just went, you know, live coverage of, uh, you know, uh, President Uhuru's visits oh to, yeah? um, uh, you know, to, to Uganda. And, and that, that, you know, that, that was quite, quite interesting, especially with regards to, you know, the East African community and the fact that, you know, this is an important visit that would actually warrant, you know, so much attention and airtime, you know, on media, mm -hmm. you know, across the region. Going forward, I think what we really, I, I just think that, um, uh, you know, the deal that was struck, this should have been something that we, we should have known by now and the media should sure. have covered it. Uh, and I agree with Gavara that it, it shouldn't wait until the opposition raises a red flag, you know, for us now to start asking, okay, where, <laughs> where, yeah. where, 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 where is this document, where is this document <laughs> you know, uh, you know and, and all that kind of thing. Can somebody break it down for us? I think we should have had that okay. in as much as we also, you know, were able to sustain his, his visit. There. His visit. Mm, so yeah. President uh, Kenneth's uh, visit? I think, I think this idea of that um, the deals have been signed and uh, he has interest, uh, interest uh, the family has interest in beef or in whatever, I think that one sometimes it might not wash because, I mean, it will come to a point when probably he signs a deal with uh, maybe China to bring in more tourists. He'll say, oh, he's bringing them in because his family yeah, has, the has, has, has <laughs> interest well, in hotels. Well, let's ask. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, but <laughs> until, I, I think until we get uh, right now we should probably the problem is that we have too many attack dogs in this country and very few <laughs> watchdogs <laughs> uh, yeah, I think yeah. yeah when there's a place of attack when there's yeah I think let's get let's get this document mm -hmm. but at the same time and I think probably we'll talk about this is one of the bills this freedom of access to information right now the government as it is uh, banks uh, talks about transparency and stuff like that. What it should do is actually post these things in a place where people can actually access them. Mm -hmm. Then we scrutinize them and uh, come to this conclusion like, okay, fine, this one is not good. This one is, I mean, this one is, because whatever it is, any trip that the, uh, Mr. Kenyatta makes out of the country and any deals he signs, I want to believe that they should be good for the country. Because he went there as the to, as a representative Head of, the, of, of, yes. of, of the, this country, of the Kenyan Kenyan nation, you see. So all the deals he struck should be good for the country, even if probably at some point in time they are going to favor more 
the family because not all of us not wait not all of us <laughs> not all of us rare cattle i mean beef, uh, beef, uh, whatever not all of us have have milk so if in the process because wh when uganda buys that milk from this country i'm very sure they're like 30,000 or 10,000 or even five other people who actually work in that industry. So we cannot just throw the baby together with the bathwater that, okay, fine, Mr. Kenyatta's family has interest in milk, so we should not sign any deal with any other country that actually favors... No, uh, no, no, no. Again, again that's, that, that, that's a, yeah. I, I think that's so, so misleading I just, what I'm saying. Uh, no, no, what, what, no, the, you uh, have been very just, clear. Just a, minute, <laughs> just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. So I think right now what we should be looking at is how do we get this information or how do you push the government to release this information so that we break it down to people? All right. So yeah. It's broken down. I think breaking it down. I think, 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 yeah. think we agreed yeah. on that. Breaking yeah. down. Yeah. But I, 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 I mean, I, I've got to respond uh, uh, a bit to this. Um, uh, the first thing is when you say that everything that the government signs, I hope you're not suggesting that we should take it for granted. No, no, no. You remember, the you remember I've, only, I've, only, I've, only always said that, I've always said that the government is, is the first person to say guilty. I've always guilty. So until you should it always be skeptical and question yeah. it. You know. But and what I'm saying is, I am not drawing such linkages you know, before you have information. And, and actually, that's that a, that this is the thing. That the fact that he has interests in this particular industry should, for us, always raise a flag. Is he doing it for us? Okay, for all yeah. I can. Yeah. And why the question here? You the should always the ask that. You, you know. ask, but after you have the information no. of no. what the uh, deal what is, so that is, then, based on that... As, as we've seen in, the, in this case in Uganda, they don't come out and give you the information and then wait for you to ask. You know, they'll give it to you because you are asking. It's because yeah, you it, push it, it's good, it's good it. to ask. I don't think it's, it's good to it's ask, but I think... But I think for us to hold them to account, we shouldn't be shying away yeah, from it, this. The issue the Claire is raising yeah. here, Patrick, is everyone agrees here, we ask, we need, we need the information. Yeah, right. The concern here is, before you tag it is for your interest, check um, the information again, first. Because said, largely, mm. what is being said here is that this is about selfish no, interest uh, no, yes, and the perhaps The question is, and actually, the, uh, 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 I was reading the, the, uh, it was the standard, actually, when I was coming in. You know, and the same thing. The question is, is it for his personal interest, is it in the national interest? Yeah, but you so know, how do you ask the question that before I you have that we need to ask. information? It's a valid question okay. that is Okay, is it for so his personal uh, interest, uh, but just is, very it, quickly, is it quickly. Robert, no, Robert Biden? Let me right. just add to, uh, uh, to something very quickly. First is, um, uh, uh, we also need to look at the opposition stand. You know, um, they are presenting this uh, as this is going to undercut Mumias, blah, blah, blah. But the rot and the problems in the sugar industry go beyond simply the importation of sugar, you know, of, of cheap sugar coming in. There are structural problems, are problems to do with cane poaching, etc. We should be asking them, because they are legislators in, government, in, in, in Parliament, what are they doing? We have a report that was put out by Parliament last year, you know, by the committee, that highlighted things that needed to be done, that had recommendations that go to legislation that needs to be put in place, you know, uh, regulations, etc. You know, what have they actually done about that? Or do they wait and pretty much play politics? Let's bring in Nancy and also as you respond, Nancy, yeah. to the question of, on one hand, you know, I imagine the argument would be you have the government coming out with a billion shillings to bail out. So you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. So mm -hmm. it's not, one would argue, this, there are st uh, stakeholders and other people that are involved in this business and there are certain cases that are ongoing in court as to who brought Mumias to its knees. So when several things are done, no matter what you do, there will always be something that will say, you're doing this for other different interests, as is being raised here. Yeah, I, I think my point of departure is this: that we, we, we haven't, we, we haven't even seen. You know, we, we are not privy to this the information. Agreement, yeah. You know, so we need that. You know, brought out. I think we need to, we need to clearly dissect. You know, what, what were these deals that were struck, and how? I mean, government should be able to tell us. You know, this is how they are likely to benefit the country, and it's at that point then that you know you'd then be able to interrogate uh, whether or not uh, you know these these deals are actually good for the country and who uh, you know who's, who stands to to benefit mm -hmm. but you know with regards to the sugar sector in the country i think that's that's an area that uh, m you know a, an investigative piece right there and i think the fact that this deal has been struck 
and the bailout that was given to Mumias just a couple of weeks or m months ago, mm. you know, then points to a direction that, you know, a, a huge investigative piece right there. Yeah. You know, what is it that ails the sugar sector in this, in this country? And what does it mean, you know, if this deal has been struck in terms of sustaining uh, you know the sugar industry in in this country. Many of this of the sugar companies right now are basically on on their knees. Yeah. So it's it's a whole investigative piece out there, and I'm hoping that one of the media houses can take it, take it and run with it. So it's ready oh, here. Oh, yes, to uh, do. I mean, when, when it comes to this sugar deal, uh, I mean this importation of sugar, I, I'm not going to to to, to look at it from. Uh, like the way Duali looks at it and says like, oh, we've always imported sugar and all mm -hmm. that. There have been so many, so many underhand, un underhand or so many mm -hmm. shady deals actually mm -hmm. uh, w when it comes to sugar importation. And uh, probably uh, this is probably making it legal, you know, legitimate, you know, this is uh, uh, a legitimate way. One thing, with why we have not even, uh, we should not actually even probably start throwing stones and ask like, okay, you gave Mumia one, one billion shillings for a bailout. Why are we importing sugar? Okay, it was a bailout. First of all, you have to look at some of the things. Okay, sugar, sugar cane. How much cane is there in the first place? Because as far, I mean, f f as far as I know is that every year Mumias used to import sugar and rebag it because they did not have enough no, cane and it used to have, no, this was actually a, a, a legit And reason. there was still a cartel. Yeah, there was yeah. still a cartel, yeah, but yeah. it's a legit business because they um, do not, yes, actually no, no, if, if we look no, no, just at a minute. Uh, yeah, they used to. They used to do that. Look at the parliamentary report. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking at it yesterday. And I, I think it was, it, uh, it was it prone to abuse. It out to, uh, uh, I think uh, a few inst instances where Abumiya's in the last five years uh, imported sugar, mm -hmm. you know, and actually what they did was to give to, to get the allowance to import sugar and then to give it to another company which was illegal my point you is know, this most yeah. of the sugar that is imported and packaged is actually sugar that is shouldn't be in the market yeah but, that but that's smuggled in and then yes that's that the, the smuggling that's why i'm what i'm saying now is that probably i mean this one is to cut the smugglers i mean to cut the but smugglers, the smugglers, smugglers to remove, the, to to remove from the smugglers from uganda most of them it's yeah to but that's smile. why but his argument the, is you're you looking you for bring a place a legitimate you bring it legitimate and actually you cut prop, yes because need for this is why i think we need to look at this deal because there is no market this sugar is it going to come from uganda directly to the shops or is it going to come uh, from Uganda? Okay, and now we are talking about sugar. So let's yeah, but how the discovery is that's what, that's what we need to look at. Like, I think, okay, yeah. fine, this sugar, is it's not going to come, because from the way, I mean, it's being presented, it's like this sugar will come from Uganda and go straight to the shops. Mm. I mean, it's, it, it will have to be probably rebugged. I mean, we still don't know. So we need to understand how all this will work. Yeah. 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 All this will work. Last comment on sugar. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we need, we need <laughs> yeah. To all right. That. No, not just on sugar. I mean, just on the on whole deal that, that yeah. was struck. I think what what is coming out is that there is need for a lot of information. Okay. <laughs> you know, even we here do not understand. I mean, do not seem to understand what exactly what does this mean what does what do these deals entail mm -hmm. so it just points to yes there is a lot of information that is needed out there can the media break it down for us in the next couple of days and also invest you know give us some some report whether you know um as a country we can be able to uh, sustain you know the dairy products and 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 um and, 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 and even dairy products hey, actually hey, let's let's import finish. Milk, yes. by milk yeah. yeah. yes yeah, yeah, yeah because good, yes, that's actually that's actually important. yes because milk. we we import powdered milk yes. so can we be able to sustain that right. and then of course a whole investigative piece there on the sugar sector i want us to country. move this on to international <laughs> politics <laughs> <laughs> a little uh, because the uh, republicans had their debates the other day uh, and there's been a lot of attention on donald trump i don't know how many of you have been following uh, oh. this but uh, he's quite the character uh, yes, uh, <laughs> controversial <laughs> one and the other day during actually the debate uh, after he he insulted pretty much i mean he made some insane remarks uh, about the journalist uh, one of the ladies who was uh, moderating the panel uh, during the debate y your thoughts on the media attention in america <laughs> on donald especially because he's seems to be running away with the entire <laughs> campaign, campaign period right now. Well, uh, I, I think it, uh, I was reading up a little bit about, uh, about that um, uh, this morning. You know, and uh, it, it seems to me in the U.S. Uh, uh, you've got 
a, a very polarized uh, uh, section, especially of the Republican Party, that play that he's playing too, you know. Um, uh, and 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 actually, he, the Fox News Channel, the, um, uh, the whose presenter mm -hmm. he, uh, 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 he insulted, mm -hmm. Kelly. went begging to him, you know, to get him back because he had said he wouldn't give them any more interviews. But mm -hmm. their own base, you know, who they play to, uh, this is the I would call them the e e extreme right in the in the U.S. You know, were demanding him, you know. Um, uh, uh, and stuff and you had the boss of the channel having to reach out to Trump to try and organize some sort of uh, 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 mediation, you know, stuff and offer him sports back on the show ETC. So essentially, you've got the Fox Channel pandering uh, uh, to Trump because he's got a constituency. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's unfortunate. I mean, lots of people will look at it, but um, that constituency doesn't really seem to be offended. By end of the things you said, it's not just about women, you said it's about vote? Mexicans. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? Yes. laughs> but, but, but is it a constituency yeah. in terms yeah. of yeah. vote, or is it a constituency, con constituency in terms of people who just want to watch um, the drama on TV? This is all <laughs> about the Republican nomination. And by far, even after all the stupid things you said, he is by far the front runner for it. <laughs> you know? so, once I think it gets closer to, uh, uh, to, to the primaries, um, you might have a bit more uh, rationalizing and people realizing uh, this within the parties. And you, you've seen some of it uh, uh, already with the funders of the party. They know Trump is not electable, you know, in the sense that he cannot be president. There's no one who's going to vote him. Uh, or, 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 or he can't carry the, 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 the Republicans, the, the base to which he's playing is too small elect him, you know, um, and he's polarizing for everybody else, you know, so you've had even the bosses of the party side to think we need to draw back, to pull mm. back, and actually this thing on Fox and the way he was put on the spot was seen by many as a setup, you know, mm. especially to cut, to clip his wings, <laughs> you know, and his reaction, the reaction of the base. What do you mean seen as a setup? Well, because um, that's been asked a question, a legitimate yes, question, uh, true, on things you have uh, said in uh, the past. Given, again, uh, uh, lots of the questions were directed towards him. And uh, it's true, as, I mean, as a front runner, he, he should have expected that. And because know. he's the but most... But lots of people, um, uh, in fact, given the fact that uh, Fox News, which organized the debate, um, uh, is very pro-Republican, uh, uh, their politics are well known, that they chose to go after him wasn't a mistake. You know, wasn't a coincidence. Mm -hmm. You know, lots of people interpreted this as an attempt to essentially to clip him. You know, because he's leading. I disagree. But he I see it win. as good journalism yeah. in this sense. That no, no, he's I'm not saying it's not good journalism. I'm not saying it's not good journalism. Yeah, because when you when people say interpreted to go after yeah, yeah, him to clip his wings, yeah, suggests that, that, that was some that mean thing. No, 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 no. I'm not saying it was mean at all. Yeah. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that within the politics of America, from what I've read. People that interpreted yeah. this as Fox essentially trying to reduce... Yeah, because what the media there has had. done mm -hmm. is, whilst giving him all of this attention, has also largely tried to just unmask and point out this doublespeak. He has so many contradictions, positions he took before now changing, and he's quite... Character. Yeah, yes, I mean and he has said, I mean, he has said some very unsettling things yeah. not just about women, you know, about immigrants and, and all that. So I, I think it was responsible journalism for them to actually uh, go, um, you know, go after him, which would be an opportunity for us here to also learn, uh, you know, because I don't think we would have that kind of scenario playing out mm -hmm. uh, here. Uh, you know, there has... Uh, what do you mean? We wouldn't go after... Um, <coughs> I mean, w with some of the media houses that seem to have, you know, um, leaning towards a, p a particular direction, that putting, uh, you know, putting a candidate on the spotlight, like Trump was put on the spotlight on Fox, you know, uh, is something that, you know, we can learn from. I think for me, the downside was, you know, that now the boss goes after him, <laughs> you know, um, 
almost to woo him back to you know to but not almost actually that's what he was doing, he was doing <laughs> yeah. you know mm. is is uh, is uh, i guess that's been pretty yeah. much as uh, the fox was throwing his own uh, yeah john uh, uh, had yeah. come yeah. out yeah. and said she yeah. wouldn't yeah. apologize yeah. 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 so oh. that for me was a little unsettling but, but you agree with what she's saying in terms of local journalists mm. we can borrow i think do you think here we have clear-cut journalists or media houses leaning a particular direction and will not hold to account the other side Actually, uh, uh, that, that, that was my point because I, I've been thinking about this and I'll uh, start my state statement by saying that I'm actually not, I'm not a political analyst. I'm much better than that. Eh? I'm a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, uh, so I would not go so much into try and analyze the, the, stand, the leanings of um, the Republicans and the, the, the Democrats and all that and say Trump is going to win after reading two, three stories. Uh, but the thing is, I think uh, the whole process, it should be I agree with Nancy, it should be a, a, a learning, uh, we should take this, we should learn much, a lot from it because it should be a lesson for actually even our political analysts, even our governance, so-called governance experts and even the media actually how this case is being handled. Um, uh, the thing about uh, that uh, the, the Fox boss went for, uh, for, uh, for Trump, for Trump based on what I, and I watched a lot of this American TV thing, based on what I've uh, actually uh, gone on for it, is that uh, during the debate, Fox had the highest ratings, 24 million people watched Fox, because Fox is not a, a very big favorite. And so, mean, so I think this is why they needed, they needed uh, Trump back. And they needed for business interests. Yes, but <laughs> uh, actually the Fox boss is not a journalist. Actually, that one guy is not was Fox is one of the, the most, most watched, watched yeah. uh, I mean, this channels, particular one, so this pari the highest ratings for one particular show, 24 mm. million. 24 mm. million actually watched that. Uh, and it's not the, the first time we've seen candidate. business take, uh, mm. you know, the upper hand yeah, and, uh, over and actually it was just to bring him back, <laughs> <laughs> it was actually just to bring him back, Digital I think, like I think to, to, to clear the air. I don't think it's about cutting his clipping his wings or anything. Mm -hmm. What based, he was in, Mich in Michigan I think last night or this morning and based on what I watched and all that, uh, what American political analysts who are far much better than what we have here in, in this country calling themselves political analysts is that... They'll take you to America. Yeah, because they actually <laughs> talk to the people, they'll tell you, I, I mean I, I spoke to the uh, whatever mm -hmm. campaign yeah. and all that, but here we just sit down and start throwing barbs and we call up yourself political analysts. And have, I have the lowest opinion actually for the so-called Kenyan political analysts. I have the well lowest the coverage, opinion. Coverage, coverage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so what they're saying is that what Trump is doing is that he's causing something called a disruption because he is yeah, actually he is, disrupting. Yeah. Uh, he's not politically correct. He's going against yeah, the grain he's, he's, yeah, he's and causing so it's a disruption news. in as much as there is a section of the Republicans who actually nobody used to listen to them and they're actually saying, okay, fine, we might not be electable, but you have to listen to us. Yeah. These are our problems. Um, that I mean we've been here before, to be quite honest. That, is, that is exactly how the American an American political analysts were actually uh, okay. analyzing yeah. it. Well, I mean, we, we've been there before. So we saw the Tea Party, the rise of the Tea Party in the U.S. You know, and stuff with some fairly radical uh, 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 views. I mean, extreme views. Mm -hmm. I, I have to say, you know. So there is a base to which, or a constituency to which Trump plays. Yeah. But I think there is also a recognition that um, uh, if they put up, the Republicans put up Trump as their, uh, 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 as their candidate, they're going to go nowhere. They, don't no. they are not interested in I yeah, mean being um, now eight the years the out the of the, the White the House. The learning bit I was talking about, the learning bit I was talking about is that... Also Briefly, I make yeah, the point. I think, I think also the, the learning bit I was talking about is that uh, apart from the media learning from it, in fact, uh, what is going on in the U.S. now should be also a learning thing for even the government and the opposition mm -hmm. too. The government should not keep on saying like, okay, because right now we're behaving as if opposition is an illegitimate thing, or you cannot say well, as long as you're in the opposition, you're supposed to toe the government's line, you're supposed to, you're supposed to support the government and everything, and that's, that's the line that actually is being sold to us. Really? And Ever since Obama came here, that has been the line. I mean, from all <laughs> <laughs> I heard yeah. differently from that speech, but yeah, okay. Yeah, I know. Ever since Obama came here, that has been the line. Like, oh, if you go against the government, you're unpatriotic and stuff like that. And that's Who uh, is selling it to you? Oh, come on. This is the line everywhere. And that's one of the reasons uh, why we are being... We are being we are, uh, that's why <laughs> I, I said this conversation by saying that democracy was actually being attacked in Uganda. And the other day when I think uh, Mr. Kenyatta was somewhere in Makongeni, that was the same thing that it, in Thika. So in your opinion, he did not speak to democracy? 
I think, no, no, no. I think what, what I'm, the point is that yeah. uh, we need to understand that actually when you're in the opposition, you, the government should actually accept, should not say that, As Obama oh, said. Y yes, you should accept yes. that actually these people are also legitimate. Because something, some of the things, Trump does not, it does not cost him anything to say that our leaders are stupid, you know, and he gives you reasons why he thinks they are. All right, I mean, we have two I'll minutes to go. I want your thoughts and, and all. Also I'll cut you short yeah. because I think you've made your point. I'll, I'll get to the bills that are pending and there's an extension being sought to come back home uh, for one year to be able to see them um, debated and gotten into law, whatever changes will need to happen thereafter. Uh, but Nancy, have you, as you've watched this story, ha has the media broken down in, in the sense, first, why we have this situation now when you have 28 bills, deadline fast approaching, I think in a couple of days, 27th of this 27th month. 27th of August. Um, you know, is that deadline, that so it's inevitable, we need that extension. But also, so how we've gotten here and also the significance of this bill, what effect is there by extending and not having laws in particular areas governing, um, you know, does that have? I, I don't think the media has sustained that, that conversation, mm. <laughs> you know, uh, partly because uh, uh, a large number of the public, you know, a large, a, a large most of the consumers mm. uh, don't seem to be paying <laughs> attention to the <laughs> bills anyway. So it's until an extension is sought that, you know, and the deadline is drawing nearer that then it gets the media attention. So that, uh, you know, the reason why we are actually at that point has not made headlines uh, in, in media. And that, that kind of coverage hasn't been, mm. hasn't been sustained in my view. Okay. Yeah. Patrick. Um, no, I, mean, I, I, I think I agree with, uh, 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 with Nancy. I think we need to be highlighting these things way before we get to... Crisis. the crisis or to be discussing it mm. uh, uh, before. Um, uh, I, I think... Um, uh, when we look even at the proposals that are being made right now about uh, uh, extending even the election date, yes, you know, uh, and mm -hmm. pushing it to, to December, December. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm not sure that uh, we as a media are articulating the reasons that are being put forward and then interrogating them. Do they actually make sense? They're just being put out. This will interfere with this. this will well, that is what they're saying. So the media yeah. is saying what so they want. Yeah. 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 Want. So my, my my thing would be okay. Let's look at these reasons. You know, um, uh, because. This our parliamentarians are going to sit and, 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 and vote on this. You know, let's look at the reasons they're putting forward. You know, do they make sense? You know, school they, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and stuff. So, um, I, I think there needs to be much more interrogation <laughs> ah, you know, of, 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 of what the the, the guys in, uh, uh, who sit in parliament uh, uh, propose. And whether this is not simply a backdoor way of then extending the account. Yeah, although well, I think that part has come out mm -hmm. largely. That there are those who have said this is just members of parliament wanting to. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm just disappointed that actually <laughs> the bit we're missing of, of all these bills, I, I know all of them are important, is that one of the most important bills, and I've, I've sung about this all my Access to information. Yes. Of access to information mm -hmm. that is one of the bills that is pending, mm -hmm. and I think that's where probably our our bosses or or uh, uh, our employers or the, the other bigger uh, media entities are not doing doing doing, or, or doing doing enough to push these guys to or lobby that actually this thing needs to be passed that particular probably bill, and then we can we can all these things we will get all this information that we keep on complaining that we don't have and stuff like that. Uh, but I, 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 I want to agree with Gadara and Nancy that actually we always need to keep the pressure so that we don't wait for this time when it reaches crisis point then it becomes a headline, a, a lead story. That's when now we, we start following it up and all that. Yeah. I, I think uh, we should have, uh, and probably we did it but not so much. So we kept on reminding, uh, talk, writing about this pending bill the other, the other time when they, there was, they saw an extension I think. Uh, when it was supposed to have elapsed, I think that was the other year. But probably we did not do do so much mm -hmm. and, uh, as as we should have done. Uh, it also speaks say, says a lot about uh, our, our 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 memory because sometimes we tend to have uh, we tend to have very short memories. This thing after three or four days, 
it's gone. Nobody talk is talking about the auditor general now. Mm. You see? Yeah. So, oh, <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and so I think uh, very quickly we need to do something to about our, our memory, you know. Yeah. No, but in all honesty, how is it you sustain all of these stories? Because when you say that, then you're saying pretty much consistently you're perhaps on a story. So how do you realistically keep all of that you know, momentum going in light of all of this, you've been we, we, we need more, more we need more we need more people than uh, we need more people We should employ who, Gagara. Who, yeah, <laughs> man, we need, we, you see the, our <laughs> problem is that <laughs> everything everything, <laughs> in this gets, everything in this country gets covered up uh, in the, the prohaha or in the noise mm -hmm. by political mm -hmm. analysis. Okay. And KTSL yeah. has an all news yeah. channel. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So uh, yeah. there's a lot of content. Through all the day. Yeah. I think that will that will be sustained coverage. Yeah. Also, I think we need to be a little bit more serious as as a people, as a mm. citizenry. We need to be a little bit more serious. All right, that's our thing. Yeah. Yeah. Very quickly, it's World Elephant Day today. Yes, we talked mm -hmm. about it earlier. Yeah, so it's important that the media now starts again. We're looking. I know today you're hearing the the uh, poachers and mm. butchers uh, um, <laughs> a piece. Mm. It's important that we look at that and people start questioning the role that government is playing in protecting poachers, mm. not protecting elephants. Indeed. Dr. Gadara Communications <laughs> Consultant, Dr. Nancy Bukacha of the uh, Journalism Department of the Multimedia University and Clay Muganda who is a feature editor, the standard on Sunday. Thank you for watching. That's the newsroom. Stay with us. When we return, Michael Gitonga is all about the people who put pressure on the single ones like Clay. Do people give you pressure, Clay, to get married? No. You never got pressure. Clay you should get no. married. Uh -huh. You need to get married. Yes, I know. I should get married. Who's wife? What do you mean? To do yeah, I'll tell you like, oh, you know, you need a wife. But yeah, yeah. Who's wife should I tell?